Um, I thought I was going to introduce actually by a quick introduction to Canonical um, and who we are. Um, so we are the company behind Ubuntu, uh, the operating system, uh, amongst other products, also behind Microcades, working uh, LexD, and today you're going to see uh, about microclouds. So myself, uh, my name is Antoine Vino. I'm uh, joining you from France. And my role at Canonical is a product manager for our containers and microcloud offerings. Um, so you're going to learn more about microclouds today. And we're actually going to deploy containers on top. So all is great. I'm here today with uh, Stefan Graber. Uh, I don't know, Stefan, if you want to introduce yourself quickly at first. Sure. Um, so yeah, I'm Stefan Graber. I'm the engineering manager for LexD and the project leader for um, most of our uh, traditional container projects, so system container projects like LXC, LexCFS, and LexD at Canonical. Awesome. Thanks, Stefan. So um, as Jaron said, if you have questions, please do raise your hands and uh, we, can, we can grant you the, the, the parole. <laughs> uh, otherwise, please keep muted during the workshop to avoid any background noises. So today we're going to guide you into building your own microcloud for uh, edge computing on your machine. It can be used for uh, development, it can be used for experimentation, uh, testing, or you can actually use it in uh, production use cases if you're even going further. Uh, but first, I'm going to tell you what is a microcloud, and there is a very uh, nice resource for that that we just released actually this week. And that is this uh, introduction to microclouds. I'm going to share the link in the chat here. Ah, me. I think it's, it's gone. Cool. Um, so if we just have a look into it very quickly into one of the page of this uh, white paper, it's actually presenting how these micro, well, what is this concept of microclouds and how they can be used in uh, many edge computing use cases and why you, should, you, you could actually use them. Um, as a quick introduction, because we're going to get our hands dirty and get very technical today, uh, just, I'm just going to give you the technical uh, introduction to what are microclouds. So um, actually, there is a sentence in this, uh, in this um, white paper that I, I'd like to use. Uh, that is that edge computing is a solution. It's a topology uh, describing geographically distributed compute and that microclouds are an edge computing solution. In other words, if, if you do have a PC running some custom app you know, at home, you could call it edge computing. But with microclouds, you do get cloud APIs and you can enjoy, enjoy a cloud-like experience. And that's the whole purpose of that. Uh, one of the big challenges in edge computing is actually repeatability and automation, so things that we can already do very well with uh, these cloud APIs and are doing on the clouds. Uh, now you can get these APIs at the edge with uh, these microclouds. So just to look into uh, that, to get on the left uh, picture describing these microclouds, it's actually very simple. You just get a layer of bare metal automation, a layer of virtualization to cluster your bare metal together in an abstract layer uh, that you can use as a cloud. And then on top of it, you can actually deploy your workloads uh, as containers, whether it's uh, Kubernetes containers or uh, as uh, Stefan was mentioning, uh, the, the more traditional machine containers. So that's all we're going to look at today. Uh, the advantages here is that you get cloudish uh, deployments. So you have all this automation, but you have them localized in thousands of remote sites. In our case, it's just going to be going to be our uh, our machine. Uh, but uh, yeah, in a, in a real use case, it could be thousands of sites. Uh, so I invite you to to have a look at this white paper after. The Workshop. It's, uh, I think, a great resource to get started on this topic. But today we're going to get technical and we're going to get you to have this uh, microcloud configuration on your PC or on the cloud, depending on which configuration is best for you. Um, the few steps that we're going to follow is that we're going to cluster these, um, these machines together. So we're going to uh, skip the mass provisioning, which is the automation of the bare metal. We're going to start from a few physical machines that we're going to provision manually. Uh, because in our case, it's a very small deployment and we don't want to bother with this layer. We're going to actually cluster them using uh, this virtualization layer with LexD. And then we're going to deploy small Kubernetes cluster with microcades and some workloads on top of it. Uh, finally, we should have time after that for some Q&A. So 
feel free to do, drop your questions in the, the chat if you have using the, the Q&A uh, feature. All right, so I think we are actually good to get started. Let me switch uh, which window I'm sharing to actually share some VS code, yeah. So you be, should be now seeing the same thing, but in VS code, uh, and I'm going to start following the instructions uh, through the workshop to get building our micro cloud. You will see when reading through the instructions that there are a few options uh, every time, different options. I'm going to use the cloud virtual machines option just to free my uh, computer from some workload on and you know, uh, keep the Zoom application happy. Uh, but you could be following Multipass if you want to have it running on your machine. It works on any platform and it gives you into virtual machines uh, in, in one comment. It's all documented in the instructions that were shared with you in the chat. Um, just to understand the big picture, this is what we're going to have at the end of this workshop. We're going to have these uh, four nodes, uh, a great configuration that you can do at home if you do have some uh, devices because we're doing it virtually, we wanted most of you to be able to follow. So we're going to not use uh, physical devices, but if you have a few Raspberry Pis, uh, you can actually use them and uh, follow the workshop on them or just do it another time after the workshop once you're familiar with the, the comments. Uh, on top of these physical machines, as I said, we're going to cluster them with this LexD layer to have an abstract uh, virtualization layer that we can use as a cloud. And on top of it, you are going to provision some uh, microcades cluster to give us the Kubernetes APIs and deploy uh, workloads, so some containers on top of it, just to, to kind of prove the point of uh, this work. All that, we're going to use uh, Juju and Charmed operators. I'm going to give, tell you a bit more about that uh, further in the workshop. You could also not use them. It's also documented in the instructions if you do want to try it otherwise. Um, all the minimum configurations that I'm going to skip because um, hopefully you did had the time to look at it before the workshop. But just a, a better, um, I mean, a more technical view into what we're going to build. That's exactly the same thing as before, but just maybe more, uh, uh, more from a technical point of view. Uh, we're going to use only three nodes today because if you're using multipass, um, four nodes, it might be a bit hard on one machine to actually run all of them. Uh, the fourth one here is a very small machine. It's actually uh, an external machine, could be your host, to um, have a Juju controller, what a Juju controller, which is um, managing the three other nodes and provisioning uh, the, the workloads on top of them. So I'm going to, uh, as I said, go to the next step and use uh, cloud virtual machines. I'm going to use EC2, uh, AWS EC2 for that, and I'm going to use uh, ARM uh, virtual machines that are running on AWS. So let me actually do that. And if you want to uh, follow along, you can uh, do the, inst the instructions at the same time as I'm doing them. I need to, again, switch tabs. All right, so you should now be seeing the, uh, the console of the AWS EC2. And I'm going to use the launch instances. We do want four of them. We do want uh, the three um, nodes to, um, do, to emulate our physical edge nodes, and a fourth one to do the Juju controller that is going to be on the same network as the others. So for that, I'm going to use Ubuntu machines. What else? Uh, and I'm going to pick the ARM configuration here uh, to be on an ARM architecture using the, the Graviton machine on AWS. I think that um, we do need at least the medium configuration. I'm going to go with large to uh, make the steps faster. But yeah, the minimum one that you need for the workshop is uh, the, the medium one in this case. I do have the Zoom window in front of me. You can click on Next to configure the instances. And we're going to use four of them, as I said, um, just making sure that they are in the same uh, VPC network. And we can click Next to add storage to it. Here I'm going to change from 8 gigabyte to 10, uh, just to have a bit more space for the workshop. I think 8 is enough, but it might be quite small if you do want to run some workloads on top of it afterwards. 
add tags, we can skip that. Security Europe, here it is an important step. Um, you should create a new one that you call uh, microcloud workshop. Um, can uh, leave the description empty actually. And here we want to enable all traffic, all incoming traffic. That's not uh, the best security configuration that you could do on your uh, AWS machines, but that's going to be safer as we need to uh, have network access from the machines, from a host, and um, yeah, that, that's just going to be the easiest one. So review and launch. Oh, I actually do need a description. Um, well, we have the family of summit and reviewing trying to jungle, juggle with the zoom windows here. I think we do have uh, what we wanted to have. Otherwise, we can do it again. It's pretty quick. Here, if you don't have already a key pair, you should uh, create one. In my case, I already have downloaded one before the workshop, so I'm going just to use it uh, and launch the instances. So while this is launching, this might be a good place if there already is questions. Um, otherwise, we can follow along with the instruction. It's a lot of just configuration here. If you're using the multipass one, you might be ahead of us and already have your four machines uh, ready to operate. Uh, but it's so good to leave your time to do it if you're using cloud machines. We, um, we did have one question, uh, Valentin, from uh, yeah. Andrew. Um, it looks like two questions here. Uh, one, uh, can you use Terraform or Ansible for provisioning and configure respectable uh, VMs or containers in a microcloud? I want to say yes. I'm less familiar with uh, with these two, but you, I don't see a reason why you could not do it. So yeah, I'm going to say yes. Okay, cool. And the second follow-up part of that question was, uh, is microcloud based on OpenStack? It isn't. Um, there might be some confusion because we've been this, we've been talking about microstack in some other um, marketing materials on you know, communications. Uh, here it's completely different. It's a completely different stack made of modular components. It's actually more a concept than it is a product, if you if you will. Um, a concept of layering this uh, this modular components to create something that looks like a cloud but is much smaller and localized at the edge. In our case, it's using uh, a set of products that are Mass, LexD, usually Ceph for storage and Microcades for Kubernetes. So it's actually not using OpenStack. Uh, we do have some customers asking for OpenStack, but it's still quite big for edge deployments. Usually we are looking at very small machines and OpenStack is yeah, often too big for these machines. Awesome. Thanks, Valentin. So thank you, Jaron. I think the, um, yeah, this is still initializing, but we can already start the configuration. Uh, I'm going to switch windows to uh, my VS Code 1. I lost the issue on the bar. Here it is. All right. Um, according to instructions, I am already done here. Um, at the, this one, I've already done it before the workshop. So I already have the, the key pair on my machine. I am the uh, change permissions. And now I'm going to configure the uh, host names, the aliases with uh, the actual DNS names of the machines, the cloud machines that I just launched. So I'm just going to do a copy and paste job here to get the uh, DNS names. Definitely not the most exciting thing part of the workshop, but it is necessary. And cool. All right, so I do have this configured in my uh, SSH config, so it's going to be much easier for the next steps. And now I'm going to uh, change the host names. Again, that's something you have to do if you're using the, the multipass option. And I see that uh, we already have some of you that are uh, waiting on me because they have it ready, probably with multipass. But this is just a matter of seconds now. So this is configuring on the uh, cloud machine, the host name, so that when you log in on the cloud machine, you're going to see uh, node one, node two, node three, or Juju, instead of 
whatever IP address it got from uh, AWS. So it seems to be done, and we can actually demonstrate what I just said, uh, SSH into node one, and uh, yeah, the whole thing is good. So um, just for the one following along with multipass, when I do SSH, it's going to be for you uh, multipass, oops, multipass shell of the name of the machine. Uh, and uh, when you do execute a comment on top of it, it's going to be multipass exec with the comment here. I think that's actually all we need to know from here. So let's actually get started with, uh, with some more exciting work here. Uh, so we are gonna, going to use what we call model-driven operations. That's a, I want to say new concept, but it's actually not that new, but it's uh, a concept that we are bringing to cloud-native operations. Uh, one of you mentioned Ansible before. If you think about Ansible, it's actually using uh, scripting, so step-by-step -step instructions. And if you think about model-driven operations, it's a, it's a different paradigm where it's using model instead of instructions. I mean, you do have instructions in, in, in the configuration in the end. But when you think about it, it's a model. You're, you're modeling what you do want to deploy. Uh, so let's say a database that you're relating with an application. And you're telling uh, an operator to deploy this model on your infrastructure. So um, I do have a more funny description of what this is in the instructions. You can go through it quickly. If you want to think about it in other concepts, then uh, you know, uh, informatic or technical con concept. You can think about when you're trying to get someone to draw something, you basically have two main ways to do it. One is step by step. So yeah, draw four small lines. Uh, if I were asked to do, draw a ship, a chip, um, yeah. you can yeah, say, draw four small vertical lines, draw a circle on top of it, you know, draw another circle on the top left, um, then you know, small, some triangles or whatever. Uh, and yeah, you, you, you cannot say what you're, you, you're drawing because you, uh, you have to do it step by step. Or otherwise you can rely on shared knowledge of concepts. And in this case, you can say what you're drawing and just ask, can you draw me a, a ship, please? And uh, usually, depends on the person, but usually the second option looks, looks much better. It might look different depending on the person, uh, but it's going to look like the same concept. It's going to look like a, a ship in this, uh, in this case. Now, if you think about it in, in terms of uh, cloud infrastructures and cloud operations, especially at the edge, your, uh, your hardware is going to be very different from one site to another. You can have the same hardware, but usually it's going to change a bit. Some configurations are going to change. But what is not going to change is the model of what you want to deploy. So the fact that you, you want uh, to serve a way, web application, I think maybe that's smaller. In that case, it's going, to be, it's going to look like that. No matter what are the steps that you take to deploy this, you're always going to need a, an Nginx proxy, uh, I mean, in this example. Uh, and Nginx to serve the website, uh, and JS to, to serve the, uh, the uh, backend API, and a MongoDB for the, the database of your application. So this model is not going to change, but the hardware and the instructions to deploy it are. With model operations, we have what we call champ operators that actually contain all of the knowledge on these concepts and that you can use to build this, uh, these bundles, these uh, relations between uh, you know, applications and deploy them. It's going to be to get clearer when we actually do the, the instructions together to deploy our micro clouds with, uh, with model driven operations. So the first step to doing that is to register the physical nodes that we get, uh, that we just deployed on the cloud or on your own machine if you're using multipass. We're going to register them in the agent, in the um, orchestrator that we will use to deploy these models to. Uh, and in, in our case, it's going to be uh, Juju. It's a canonical product, an open source product as well, uh, that you, you can use to deploy jump operators to just in infrastructure. So I'm going to do that. The picture that we're going to have at the end, just to, it's always helpful to have picture. And you have that at each uh, step of the instructions. At the very bottom, you have a picture of what you're going to get at the end of the page. So we're going to get the three uh, physical machines on the same network. That's already the case. And a Juju controller installed on the fourth one 
uh, that we know about our three physical machines. So let's actually do that. Uh, if you're using Multipass, you need to launch the fourth machine. We already did it on the console, AWS console. Now we need to log in on the Juju machine to uh, inst um, yeah, Juju machine <laughs> to install uh, the Juju Snap, which is the uh, application that we're going to use to orchestrate all of this. So it's a pretty simple command, just like install Juju. Uh, here we are using the classic confinement. If you're familiar with snaps, it just means that uh, this snap needs some particular accessory and machine and is not confined. If not, then um, it's just an option that you can put. Um, then we're going to need SSH access from this machine to all the other ones and also to itself. Uh, you can just accept all of the defaults. I'm going to uh, zoom windows everywhere on my screen. Probably don't know. <laughs> so yeah, I'm going to um, to enter the, the public key that I just generated in my authorized keys, meaning that I allow my uh, identity to log in into my own server because I trust it. And uh, now I'm going to log out from this to do machine to do it on all of the other ones. You have the instruction uh, below. You have an expand one if you're using cloud machines. So here, what it is doing, it's, it's grabbing the public key from the Juju machine and it's logging on on um, those one, two, and three to uh, add it to authorized keys. So well, now what we should be able to do is log in into all of the machines from the Juju one using SSH which means we can add our uh, the physical nodes into the Juju controller. So let's go back to the Juju machine. And from there, we're going to tell to Juju to add a new cloud. So uh, the cloud is a concept in Juju. It's a concept of uh, infrastructure that contains machines, physical or virtual that you're going to orchestrate and uh, provision things on top of using charmed operators, so using model-driven operations. In that case, I'm going to call it Bear because it's our, um, our bare metal cloud. It is a manual type cloud. Um, as I said before, we could be using Mass. Mass is provisioning physical machines, so bare metal for you automatically. Um, that's a great way. There is, I just linked yesterday um, a new link uh, to a new tutorial on how to run mass with Multipass on your own machine, but we don't have that much time today to do all of it. So we're just going to skip it and uh, register the machine manually. What I did forgot to copy the uh, IP address. I'm going to open a terminal on the side and SSH into the Juju machine. The welcome message tells you what is your uh, IP address. It's a private private one in the AWS VPC, sort of a private network that you have between your machines. Uh, but because we are only going to be to operate between these machines, that's uh, fine to use it, and it's going to make the outputs of the further commands easier to read. So I'm just going to um, here you you had the uh, SSH string to connect to your Juju machine, so open to add. Uh, the IP address of this machine. You can trust the fingerprint. And uh, this is added. So from there, what we're going to do is what we call the bootstrap operation. I'm going to launch it because it takes some time and tell you a bit more about it, what it's actually doing it. So the command is juju bootstrap bear, uh, bear being the, the name of the cloud that we just created before. What the bootstrap operation does, it's, it, it actually um, complete the picture here. So it register the machine um, to the Juju uh, configuration, and it deploys this Juju controller software on top of the Juju machine. That is an agent, okay. we can call it an agent, that is going to know about all our uh, physical nodes and be able to uh, operate software during its life cycle um, from, from this Juju machine here. So that is a very, um, very simple operation, although it does take some time because it, have to, it has to install uh, a bunch of software on the machine that you're registering. 
and or bootstrapping in this case. So it does take some time. While this is happening, if we have questions, again, that's a great time to ask them. Um, and otherwise we can discuss what are the next steps. Yeah, Valentin, we did get one question just come through from uh, Andrew. Uh, do uh, Juju and MicroCoAX uh, support more modern SSH keys like ED25519? That is an excellent question. Um, I'm afraid I don't have the answer right now. Maybe Stefan will know, but I don't. I don't know. I remember trying that some time ago and I forgot what it did. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. I don't know. If Stefan doesn't have the answer, we can we can take it offline and I don't know if there will be a transcript or whatever we can we can put it there. Yeah, I'm taking a quick look now. Um, I, I don't see why, since Juju just calls normal SSH, there's no reason why it wouldn't use any of, well, it should be able to use all the, the key types. I'm just checking on a plus system, see what it's doing out of the box. Uh, it would definitely be better for it, for it to use um, one of the elliptic curve ciphers instead of RSA. Um, so I'm checking that and I, I answer the question uh, in the Q&A section. Awesome, thank you. Okay, cool. um, we, we had one more, one more quick question just come in. Um, uh, uh, this is cloud, how can we emulate a OS as an API on a device? Come again, I'm not sure I got oh, it. Yeah, I think, I think the question is saying, uh, because this is deploying on the cloud, um, how can we emulate an OS as an API on a device? Okay, what I'm not sure I get is uh, as an API, but um, I think if I'm answering correctly, uh, that the multipass option is actually doing that. I'm not sure if I got a question right. Uh, feel free to tell me that I'm, I'm, I'm off topic. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> No, I, th I think that's good. I'll, I'll share the, uh, the option. Okay. Cool. Thank you. So I think, yeah, it finished actually. Let me again move my Zoom window so that I can see what it's telling us. But it does, yeah, it does tell us that it's completed. Uh, a default model has been added. I, did, I didn't explain what are models, and I think it's the right time to do it. Uh, models are a way to organize what you deploy, so your workloads and to confine them. If you uh, know about Kubernetes, it's a bit like namespaces to yeah, just organize conceptually your, uh, your deployments and, uh, and confine them. So if I do the to do models common, it actually lists me uh, which models I do have on my, uh, on my controller, on my to do controller, on my to do cloud. Um, and in that case, you see that I have one for the controller, for, so for the, the agent uh, that is here. Uh, I do have one default, which is the default one, as the name says, uh, to deploy your know, getting started stuff. And we're going to add one. Um, so I do to add model, I'm going to call microcloud for uh, adding our physical machines to and uh, deploying this uh, virtualization layer on top of. So um, something we can also do is Juju status that gives you some information about your environment, about your context. And here you can see that uh, I'm in fact in the new model that I just added, so the microcloud model. This is on the bare uh, controller, on the bare cloud, on the controller uh, default, so the first one that we created. You can have multiple controllers on one cloud, but that's another topic. Uh, the cloud is the bare one, so the one that we just added, and some other information. So from there, we are going to add our physical nodes with uh, the Juju add machine. So that's, again, because we are in a manual cloud configuration. I also added some, uh, some variables options to see what is happening while we do that. Uh, what I'm going to do again is to get the IP address of the nodes that we want to uh, add by SSHing into it, just like copy pasting it from the welcome message. There are other ways to do that. You can use the AWS console or you can use uh, IP, the IP command, but that is a pretty easy one. 
uh, again, just accept the fingerprint of the new machine that you're adding. And you see that uh, because I added a lot of variables and show log options, we have a lot of output there uh, that is telling us what is actually happening while uh, this comment of, of uh, registering a new machine is, um, is running. Uh, what it's doing is basically detecting what kind of machine and characteristics you have and installing the right software for the Juju um, agent on it. So I'm going to parallelize this operation, otherwise it's going to take us too much time. Um, so SSHing from another terminal or uh, multipass shell from another terminal into uh, the Juju machine and repeating this uh, juju add machine command with uh, this time node two, the node two IP address. Accepting the fingerprints, you see it's uh, detecting configuration. And for the third one, same thing, going to SSH in the juju machine, open the fourth terminal, this is getting a bit messy here and all right copy paste in the IP address we close it uh, a bit bigger all right uh, so juju add machine and the IP address that I just copied Let's take the print all right uh, I'm going to open another terminal but in another window otherwise you won't see anything, SSH into Juju, and from there into the Juju controller machine. And from there, what we're going to do is we're going to use watch to refresh uh, the status of what is happening in the background with the Juju status call, um, comment. And I'm using the color option just to get some fancy color of, uh, of status. It's a bit big, isn't it? Uh, do that. All right, cool. So you see that we have the three machines that we just uh, added. The two, two of them are still in panning state, so still installing the Juju agent software on, on top of the machines. One is already started and ready to operate. Um, so it means that the software is installed and configured. And we're going to let that happen in the background and focus on uh, the next steps. So the next step, as I said before, is going to be the one where we cluster our physical nodes together in an abstract layer that will look a lot like a cloud that is actually a cloud um, and that we will be able to automate to manage with uh, APIs to provision mach new machines and uh, kill machines without you know, thinking too much about it. And on the other hand, on the physical, um, physical part of things, we're going to be able to add and remove physical nodes very easily because of the virtual layer in between without you know, interfering with uh, too much with the workloads that are actually running on our cloud, on our uh, edge cloud. So the picture that we're gonna have at the end will look like this. So the three physical nodes, uh, each of them will be a worker node for the Lexi cluster. And we're going to cluster uh, the three of them together uh, with Lexi and get this abstract layer, this uh, blank space, or light blue space in this case, where you will uh, be able to start deploying your, um, your workloads. In our case, it's going to be uh, Kubernetes clusters, because that's what is fancy right now. Uh, but it's very interesting, because it's actually future-proofing what you're deploying at the edge. Micro, um, micro case, or Kubernetes is what is fancy right now. But if tomorrow it's something else, well, you can have a, a machine in this Lexi cluster space, and install whatever else you will uh, need to use by then. So that is pretty cool. Um, all right, the three of them are started and registered properly, so we can actually move on uh, to this um, to this LexD cluster step. So all the steps that we took to register these machines, all the steps that I took to explain you uh, what are these uh, model-driven operations are now going to make sense because we're going to use a, a charm operator, so containing uh, concepts and information about this, um, this concept of a LexD worker node and LexD clusters. And we're going to use it to install, configure, and operate through its lifecycle, uh, the LexD cluster on top of the three physical nodes. 
that is actually this one line comment that you're looking at that it's going to do all of that. So I'm going to kill the to do status. I'll do it once so we have it there. See that we have all of the three machines registered in this microcloud model. And from there, I'm going to um, do to deploy LexD, so the LexD application with three units, so three instances of this application to the machine zero, one, and two. As you can see above, uh, these are our uh, physical nodes. Again, in our case, it's, it's cloud machines, but uh, should be uh, edge nodes, physical machines. And uh, we're going to tell the operator, the charmed operator, to cluster them. So to use the mode cluster to cluster them together. Uh, because I am on ARM machines, I'm going to specify to um, Juju that this is the case and to use the right software. So this is done uh, in Juju with the constraint. And uh, in this case, the constraint is ARC architecture is uh, ARM64. All right, and uh, I'm pretty sure I pressed enter, but I did it in the Zoom. No, okay, all right, cool. Um, well, I just deployed it, it was very quick, right? Uh, this got the charm from charm hub, so the charm operator from charm hub, and this is now deploying it to our cluster into our physical node. We can see that happening using the to do watch status command. Um, so trying to make that a bit bigger. I am going to close some of the other terminals that I had open so that we have more visibility here. All right, cool. Okay, so what you just saw or didn't because it was very quick is um, that we got three units as we requested of the legacy application. Uh, all of these units were deployed on different machines. That's what we said with the two options. So on machine zero, one, and two. Um, what we just missed because I was a bit slow uh, on the message part is what uh, steps were taken, but it's not super important. But if we were to do it manually, we would have done all of these steps manually on each of the nodes. Uh, because we use this charmed operator, it was super quick and easy. It actually installed the LexD uh, application on each of the nodes, configured it, and clustered uh, all of the three nodes together in one LexD cluster that you can uh, use to abstract a, a cloud layer. So all good. It seems all complex, but that was very, uh, very easy comment. Uh, what we can do now just to to look into what we just did and get to know a bit more is that we can SSH into one of these units uh, and run just a few comments to explore what is going on there. So I'm going to log into the unit lexd slash zero. So to do that, you get a juju SSH comment. If you were not using juju, you, can, you could just SSH into the node one machine or a shell into it. In that case, that's what we're going to do. Uh, and as I said, you see that uh, by doing that, we actually end up in the node one machine that we uh, configured earlier. And from there, what I can use is I can do, do, use the Lexi command line to uh, see what we just did. So I can do a Lexi cluster list. Uh, oops, that is a lot of output. Uh, from there, you see that the three nodes that we uh, added manually earlier are actually there, configured in a Lexi, you know, three node Lexi cluster. Three node, by the way, means high availability. So if one fails and then uh, we add a new one or one comes back online, we won't lose any uh, information about our cluster. And you can also use the Lexi list comment to see what is running on top of our cluster. So uh, this is the, the bottom of the iceberg. This is the physical nodes. And this is the top of the iceberg. This is the virtual workloads. At the moment, we don't have any. Uh, but as we go through the further instructions, you're going to see some things. Uh, running there. All great, then we can already jump to the next step, which is deploying Kubernetes clusters on top of it. Um, I don't know if there are any questions, but if yes, uh, we're going to keep them for later because we have an operation that takes quite some time. Uh, the next step that I think is a good time to ask questions. So let's just head to the next step. 
so again, just to recap, um, just recapitulating what we did until now. From this picture, which is almost the end picture that I presented at first, what we did now is uh, we have the three physical nodes on the same subnet. We have a fourth node, the Juju controller, that is also on the same, uh, that has network access to the others. We have installed the Juju controller on top of it that is able to manage and operate through the life cycle of these machines. We have uh, installed a LexD worker node on each of these physical nodes. We have clustered them together with LexD, all that in one command using Juju. And what we're going to do now is deploy, uh, first register our LexD cluster as a new cloud in Juju and in deploy and, and, and configure uh, MicroKate's clusters. Again, with this one common Juju deploy uh, that you already know pretty well. So let's uh, let's head into that. Oh, and I didn't introduce MicroKate's, um, but the name I think is pretty straightforward. It's a micro Kubernetes, so a very small um, Kubernetes. It's actually using the upstream Kubernetes uh, content, but put into a snap, so a confined package, uh, and with a very opinionated view of what a Kubernetes cluster should be so that you don't have to configure everything. I don't know if you tried to uh, deploy a Kubernetes cluster from the upstream project. That is great, but that's super hard. Like you have to make a lot of decisions of what storage you want to use, what networking you want to use. Uh, in the case of microcades, this is all decided for you. You can still configure it, uh, but you can also just do snap install microcades and you have a Kubernetes cluster running on your machine. So if you're a cloud native developer, if you're uh, working on top of Kubernetes, that's a great way to test to play with Kubernetes. And if you're uh, using Kubernetes on small machines, it's a great way to actually deploy it. So again, option A, we're going to use Juju to deploy it in one command. Um, that's a bit of a buzzword title because we're going to, to, we're going to need a bit more than one command because we're going to, to need to register our LexD uh, cluster as a new cloud in Juju, as I said before. First step to doing that is actually uh, getting the credentials um, to be able to administrate our LexD cluster. Obviously, we cannot do it like this. We need some credentials. Uh, so that's uh, what this step is doing. So for this step, I'm going to be from node one. Uh, and I am already on node one, so that's great. If you're not, you can just SSH into uh, node one or multipass shell into node one. I'm going to use the Lexi command line that we just used before to add a new remote, so a remote cluster uh, that I'm going to add to name microcloud. And uh, I'm going to need the IP address of uh, node one. And actually, I can get it like that. All right, the IP address of node one is there. Um, this might sound a bit weird because we are adding a remote from something that we are actually logged into. But that is because we want these uh, certificates to be generated and we want to use them to log into the cluster uh, from our Juju controller later. So this step is basically just to generate these certificates and then register them uh, with, with this uh, Juju controller. Uh, so the command is uh, let's the remote add microcloud and the IP address that I just got from another one or actually any node of uh, the cluster. So you see here, we don't know the password because we didn't deploy it ourselves. We used to do, to do it. So I'm just going to exit this, uh, this comment because I, I don't know the password. Uh, so it seems that it has failed, but it didn't. It actually generated all the certificates that we are going to need. Um, just to give you a look into it, their certificate is at this location. And it's a client certificate that is unique, and that is uh, going to be able to, um, is going to enable us to log into this LexD cluster from a client. In this case, the client is the Juju controller. So I'm going to transfer these uh, certificates to the Juju machine. Again, you have instructions for both multipass and cloud machines there that you can just copy and paste. Um, this is executed from your host. So what this just did, it, it copied the certificate that I showed you to um, the Juju machine. 
So now we're going to log into the Jojo machine. And what we're going to do there is that we're going to use a uh, Jojo action to trust these client certificates in the Lexi cluster. And then we're going to be able to use this certificate to actually administrate the Lexi cluster. Um, what is an action, you might uh, ask? That's a great question. Again, to uh, illustrate, we're going to use the Jojo actions command that is enlisting the actions for the Lexi application. Actions are uh, basically day two operations. So things you want to do once you have deployed some workloads to your cluster. In this case, something you might want to do is add a trusted client. So a new, uh, a new certificate for a new client that you want to be able to administrate your cluster. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. So we're going to run the action uh, add trusted client on the LexD zero unit uh, with the certificate that I just transferred to this node. Uh, the wait option makes it synchronous, otherwise it's uh, running in the background and you have to, to uh, request or to query the output of the comment to see what happened. In this case, uh, what happened is that the, cert the client certificate is now trusted to the cluster. That's great. I'm going to log out from the Juju controller. We won't need it for the rest of the tutorial and log back into node one to continue it. So, Again, I'm going to want to run this LexD remote add micro cloud, so a new remote with the IP address um, it was given before. And this time it succeeds. It doesn't query me for a password that I don't know because I just trusted my client certificate in the LexD cluster. Awesome. From there, uh, what I'm going to do is install uh, Juju and bootstrap a new cloud as we did before, but this time for the LexD layer. So again, snap install Juju on node one this time. Uh, can be from your host if you have network access to your all the nodes. In that case, I'm going to stay in the, in the AWS network. And Juju bootstrap micro cloud. So um, I'm going to show you something. And while this is happening, we're going to take questions, but just very quickly to see what is happening behind the scenes. And we're going to let the, the watcher to see what's happening. Um, is that it's it's bootstrapping, it's creating a new machine on, on top of the Lexi cluster, so in the virtual layer, and it's installing the Juju agent in it. So what I can do is I can do watch Lexi list, and we're going to see the machine appear here uh, in the stop state, and then running, and then uh, the software will be installed on top of it, and then we'll be able to use our uh, Lexi cloud with Juju. So in the meantime, if you do have questions, it's a great time again. Yeah, Valentin, thanks. We've, we've got a few questions that have come in. Um, one that we've got just, just a moment ago is from Orkin. Um, can we add different types of machines on a same micro cloud system as nodes? For example, a Raspberry Pi and a Jetson TX2 and a Jetson Nano. That is an excellent question, um, an, ex an excellent use case as well. So I do think like if you were to use math that I mentioned first, that is actually doing this provisioning automatically and you can register math in Juju and then do like Juju deploy whatever uh, on top of your machines that are registered with math. You don't have, you, you can actually register different machines, different machine types in math. Uh, but you cannot manage for Raspberry Pi or Jetson devices from mass, so that's not a great answer for this use case, which is a uh, uh, perfect one. So you could do it manually registering the machine. Something I'm wondering about, and I, I don't know, uh, and maybe that's something Stefan would know, is if the architectures were different. In that case, I, I think it, I don't, I'm not sure it is Raspberry Pi, Jetson, Jetson Nano, I think it's all ARM. Um, but if they were different, I'm not sure what you should do. Yeah, so LegacyD won't mind. Uh, if you've got uh, multiple architectures going on, you can cluster them together. Uh, we've been running LegacyD clusters that have like a mix of Intel, ARM, um, PowerPC, and IBM mainframe all in the same cluster. And what LegacyD then does is it's going to depend on the architecture of the image you're deploying. So if you're deploying Ubuntu, if you just ask it for Ubuntu 2004, 
it's not going to care about the architecture and we just like load balance across uh, across the cluster across architectures to keep it busy but if you ask for ubuntu 2004 arm 64 then it's going to deploy it specifically on an, on a machine that's capable of running arm 64 Okay, that's great to know. So you could actually have added a uh, a mainframe in your configuration oracle, and that, uh, that would have. Yeah, if you've got a mainframe well. just lying around, you can you can add it. It works just fine. We all do. <laughs> cool. Great. Yeah. So brilliant. Awesome. Um, and in the in the meantime, it has actually did everything it had to do. So great. We can move forward with that. Um, wait again, I need to move my Zoom windows. Cool. Um, the Juju stages coming is going to tell us a bit more. So we are in a microcloud default. So on the microcloud cloud that I just added in a default model, and it is empty. If I do to do models, again, you see that I have one for the controller that we just bootstrapped and one for default that was uh, the empty one that we showed. Uh, cool, awesome. So what we have there is exactly this picture. We have one Juju controller for the physical layer uh, that we don't need to care about anymore. We have an abstract layer that is a legacy cluster and we have a Juju controller deployed on top of it that is going to operate our virtual workloads running on this Lexi cloud. Awesome. All is left to do is actually to deploy these, uh, these micro gates. Um, so for that, we're going to need to use a custom, custom charm. So not one that is available on the charm hub. Before when we did, uh, remember when we did Juju deploy Lexi, it used the one from the charm hub. So the store for charmed operators where you can actually contribute your own if you want. Uh, but in this case, we're going to use one that is not there, which you can also do. Uh, and it's a modified version from a community contribution. At the moment, we don't have an official one for microcades. I'm sure it's just a matter of time until we do. Uh, but yeah, for, for the workshop, I'm going to use a modified version. You get it from uh, for ARM and AMD. AMD in, uh, in both cases, it's just a get comment to get it to your machine. So because I'm on an ARM cloud machine, I'm going to use the ARM one, of course. Again, if, and if it's not available for your platform, you could just compile it yourself. The instructions aren't there, uh, but that would take you some more time. So we do have it to our machine. What we want to do there is create a new model to organize our felts, to organize our uh, deployments, and uh, deploy four, or I think it's going to be three again, uh, three microcates nodes with a uh, simple Juju command and cluster them together. So let's add a, a new model. An edit Kubernetes is easy because Kubernetes is not easy, uh, but you're going to see with this command, it is going to be easy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to Juju deploy um, from the charm that I just downloaded to my machine. So the microcates charm for Ubuntu 20.04 and uh, a microcades. This is the name of the application. Three units again. And the fourth one is the very ugly option that we need because I have, um, in, in the version I made of these terms, I used a, a Lexi profile that has options that are not uh, very well supported by Juju for actually good reasons, but that was the simplest way for me to prepare it for this workshop. Um, and again, the constraints architecture because I on ARM, Machines. So that's again all, um, all went very quickly. I'm going to use the watch Juju status to see what is happening in the background now. And uh, well, that's a very interesting picture. Such a small comment did actually a lot. Uh, what you're seeing there is the three units of the microcades application that we just requested. You see that this time it's a bit different than before. They're actually waiting for a machine. Uh, so down there, you see the machines that are pending uh, and pending even an ID because they were not uh, existing machines. They are virtual machines, actually Lexd container, machine containers uh, on our uh, Lexd cluster. So they were allocated by Juju. And now uh, the, the charm operator, the microcase charm operator is going to install on each of these machines 
uh, the packages that it needs, the, the OS packages that it needs, the microcade snap, it's going to configure it for each of the unit, and it is going to cluster them, all of them together. So this step, these steps are pretty uh, long also because uh, well, Kubernetes is not by default very lightweight, even if this is a lightweight version of Kubernetes that we have here, it's you know a bit more than uh, some other applications. So it's going to take some time. What we can do uh, is look at what is uh, happening in the background again with the comments that we uh, learned earlier. So Lexi list and let me make that smaller. And what you see here is uh, we do have the, the machine that we already had before this one, which is the controller, uh, the Juju controller for our Lexi cloud. It was deployed to the physical node two machine. And you can see three new uh, Lexi containers that are now running on other nodes. So node one, node one, node three, node three. So it's um, seamlessly distributed load balanced between the, the physical nodes. So here we see that we, um, we have all of them running. I'm gonna close this window and go back to the Juju status. All right. So what you see is, as I said before, it's um, on this on the, the this new Lexd containers that it created. It's installing microcades and uh, configuring it. Uh, this oh, went fast. The late leader elected is is in, is actually an interesting uh, step. You can see this one that has the star is actually the leader of the cluster. Um, doesn't tell much like I mean you, do, you don't need to uh, to know that because it's a cluster you can operate it from any of the nodes uh, but you it's an interesting step because you can see that these machines are going to actually operate as a whole instead of a three uh, three different units which is a pretty great thing um, all right if we do have questions that's a good time to take them otherwise we cannot again just look at the next steps. There's one question in chat, uh, Valentin um, and Miko is having problems with virtual box and multipass. With virtual box, you said, right? Yeah, that was correct. Uh, you were saying okay. on the multipass list when using virtual box, he's not getting any uh, IP addresses and he's using Windows. So. Oh. It oh. looks like one of the, the, the things we, we had before. Um, I think you, you should not use the virtual box option, if I'm correct. I haven't done it on Windows, but uh, you should keep with the default option, because otherwise the networking is not managed by uh, multipass. But I guess. If Hi guys, yeah. uh, it's Enrico speaking. I'm having the issue. I'm, I'm on the, the, the on a Windows uh, or Home Edition, unfortunately, due to some some policies on my uh, business computer, and I can't I cannot use it uh, in the proper way. Perhaps the solution is to is to launch the um, um, uh, uh, sorry, just a second. Uh, the solution is is to is to launch the um, uh, the whole thing from the virtual box directly, and uh, and then uh, and then create the whole micro cluster from there. But if I try to use a uh, multipass from the PowerShell, it's not going anywhere because I cannot have the um, the IP addresses for for the nodes. It's yeah. uh, I I discovered it's a limitation. I, I, just uh, Google it. It's uh, it's in the issues. Okay, okay, great. If Thanks. you're uh, if you're unblocked with this, um, otherwise, yeah, the cl the cloud option is very easy one uh, if you if you can do it. And if you have Raspberry Pis, I, I really advise you to to actually do it after the workshop. So because it, it's actually way more fun because this one you're just going to trash it at the end of the workshop. Uh, there's no no sense in keeping it. Yeah, but, sure. Uh, the Raspberry Pi one is very is a useful one that you can actually use to deploy some uh, home stuff. Like I do have Home Assistant in my case and deployed on top of this, uh, which is a fun use case. Yeah, thank you. 
and I see that uh, Kim is currently trashing my machine. Yeah, um, is that from a cluster? That's likely. That is likely. You, you, if you think about it, you do have three uh, Kubernetes instances on your machine. Um, often, if you try to deploy one, it's already trashing the machine. So three of them are pretty much. Um, it's microcade, so again, it's a smaller instance. Um, but yeah, <laughs> it's a, it's a good good thing to have. Uh, all right, uh, what, what you can actually do uh, just um, as a quick thing, because I think that we are um, almost at the end of the workshop, is you can just deploy one instance. So not do the three three node microcades cluster, but just do a one node, a single node microcades cluster. Um, I did three node because I wanted to, to demonstrate this high availability configuration, but it's really not needed if it's just for uh, the, the, the workshop. Um, and it's actually all done in the background, so we can we can move forward this, with the steps and actually show what I was just talking about. Again, if I do this, uh, do SSH command to log into one of the units, uh, one of the units of the application microcades, I uh, can run from there a microcades command, uh, and I'm going to do microcades status to see what we just deployed. You see microcades is running. It is in a high available configuration because we have more than three nodes, I mean, three nodes or more. Um, they all are listed there and uh, a few a few tips about how, what you can do with, uh, with microcades. Cool. Uh, we can jump to the next step and it's uh, these tips that we just listed are actually going to be useful in the next steps. So there we, Basically, we are done with the workshop. You do have your microcloud setup. You have your LexD uh, virtualization layer to, to hide the physical uh, nodes behind a virtualization cloud-like layer. And on top of it, we have deployed a microcades APIs with a three node microcades cluster. Uh, what we just want to do now is most just for the fun or just to prove that it's working, we want to deploy something on top of microcades. So here, I want, I want I'm going to want to uh, demonstrate the new partnership that we just did with Portainer. I think it's a great use case because they do have a lot of um, a lot of, of features that are uh, relevant for edge use cases. So if you have like a central Portainer dashboard, you can actually register your edge nodes from there and manage them from from there. Uh, and it's also super easy to do. You all you have to do is use the microcades enable command and enable Portainer, uh, and that's it. Like from there. Portainer is going to be deployed and configured in your uh, Kubernetes, in your microcades cluster. All good. Um, I mean, it's all you need to do until you do want to access it because we have this running on cloud machines. Uh, so I'm going to use a reverse proxy with Nginx so that I don't need any configuration on my uh, host machine. I could also just add a route from my machine to the Lexi cluster. But, uh, oops, I actually did it on the wrong machine. Uh, I'm going to do that from one of the nodes, so node one in this case, uh, so that node one is routing traffic that it gets to the LexD cluster. All right, um, in that case, actually, it's going even to be uh, to the microcades cluster. So I'm going to get the IP address of the cluster from the juju status comment put it in a variable um, just so that I can copy and paste this Nginx configuration and move it to sites enabled so that it is enabled. Restart Nginx to make it effective. I'm going to share uh, my browser and, and copy uh, the IP address of what I think is not one add the port of Portainer, which is uh, 30, 17, 10, and enter. Cool. So I, I do have access to my microcloud, which is on uh, AWS, and to the Portainer application that was just deployed on top of it. Uh, I'm going to use a random password. And I just typed two different ones. Oh. Cool. Just with whatever password we're going to trash away this, uh, this configuration at the end. Uh, what I want to show here is from Portainer, you do, the, the Portainer dashboard, you have this great view of your cluster. Uh, so you see that we have six CPUs and almost 30 gig of RAMs. 
25 gigs of RAMs. Um, so that's, um, that's just a fun view to have. Um, and to, to finalize stuff from there, what we're going to do is we're going to add a new application. So if you enter the cluster from Portinger, you do have this add application that is super easy. Um, I'm going to add a graph and application just because it's visual. And oops, I'm going to use the uh, Ubuntu Grafana image, which is um, available from Docker Hub. So just to have a look into it, you can uh, have a look at this. It's, the, it's a Grafana image actually maintained by Canonical on top of Ubuntu so that you get always this consistent experience across your uh, container images. And there is some um, great documentation there. What I was looking for is this. Uh, so the port that is expo exposed by Grafana. I'm going to do a publication of the application as a mod port. The port that is inside the container is the one we just showed. I'm going to add a zero for um, the outside port and deploy it. The latest step that we need to take is to actually reverse proxy to the Grafana application exactly as we did for uh, the porting of one. So this is going to be super straightforward because I'm just going to copy and paste what we did there and change the port to the graph in a one. We just configure it. All right. And Restart again, Nginx. Cool. Uh, sharing again my browser. We can go to the right port. And what we see there is the graph and that port. So that's pretty cool. We, we actually went through all of it. We have Portainer, we have an actual application deployed there uh, on our micro cloud. And uh, I think that's pretty much, pretty much it. Is there any question? I think we have like five minutes left or something. Yeah, we just had uh, we had one question. I see Stefan, um, you you just answered the question, but um, might be useful for everyone else who's uh, who's listening in. Um, it was a question from Andre on the Q and A. Um, why do you need two Juju controllers? Uh, is it for the fact that the LXD cluster just has an internal IP? Uh, is it possible to expose this LXD cluster IP and just run everything with one. Yeah, so I, I can repeat what I what I typed in there, which was that and it is actually possible to have one to do control control multiple clouds. Um, and it would have been possible to indeed uh, just configure the cluster to listen on the network, which is just one config key that, that would have been set on that cluster and then feed those credentials to the existing Juju controller so that it can deploy directly uh, on, on NextD and not run a second controller for that. It's slightly newer as far as like Juju features. Uh, I don't know that many people that are running the multi-cloud in single controller uh, setup right now. So the documentation is a, is a bit more lacking in general. And um, I, I suspect also you have to jump through a bit more, a few more hoops as far as uh, passing credentials. So my suspicion is that uh, Valentine went with the slightly uh, easier approach of responding to them. Yeah, exactly. I think something interesting that it also shows is how these layers are actually independent and modular. So you could actually skip one layer and just you know deploy microcades on top of the physical nodes and cluster them together with microcades. Uh, so it does show you that they they actually don't kind of need each other. It just they just make each other better. Uh, but yeah, like they are completely independent. I um I do see oh, yeah. one of the machines now. So we don't have a lot of time left. Uh, I do have one question from Enrico. Um, I said I'd ask it live. Um, uh, big question as you works for a cellular vendor, what's the typical bandwidth for normal operations of a micro cloud that is connected through say a cat one modem, 10 megabit? Um, that's a good question. I guess it's mostly depends on your applications. If you kind of skip, you know, the, the first step, which is just installing and configuring um, the, the, the cluster, 
in that case, you, you do need to download some stuff, the, the Juju snap, the microcade snap. So it's quite some bandwidth at the beginning, but then it really depends on the application. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you.